So in our previous video, we were able to look at our first understanding of how population size changes within a population when we're looking at a ecology, when we're looking at the study of the interactions between the organisms that are living and the physical environment. So now we're going to just continue with that idea by entitling the next flowchart Changes in Population Size 2. So we'll do that, Changes in Pop Size Roman numeral 2. But now what we're going to do is we're going to take our knowledge from our previous flowchart and our previous um, video by now expanding and revising our population growth equation. What we're going to do is revise our pop growth equation. And remember, previously we came up with, uh, I counted four new equations, four boxed equations, that are going to all play a big role in this next flowchart that we're going to add on to, that we're going to elaborate and sort of fix and really, really come up with population equations that show us the true power of figuring out the changes in population size by utilizing some a bit more advanced mathematics, let's say. So what we're going to say is the following. Previously, we established the following equation, and it was a great equation. We established that the change in population size is going to be uh, always related to the, ch uh, the change in time. So delta n over delta t will give us a final number. It will give us a number based off of what we called the births minus the deaths. And again, we're ignoring immigrants and emigrants for right now. So. What I'm going to tell you is that this is okay, but not great. And what I mean by this is that if we sort of, let's say we X this out, and we replace this idea of B minus D with what we established previously. Previously in our, in our video on our flowchart prior, we st said that B can be better represented by stating that it is actually the per capita birth rate multiplied by the total population size. That's what we said. What capital B really comes down to when we uh, derive this equation. In addition, we said the same thing about deaths, and we said that this births can also be looked up upon by the death side of the story and looking specifically at the per capita death rate, and that was exemplified by cap lowercase m multiplied by the total population size. And remember, that's what represented D. So this is a better way of stating the change in population size over time. Looking at the per capita birth rate multiplied by the population size, subtract that by the per capita death rate um, multiplied by the population size. In our previous flowchart, we came up with two numbers. Hopefully, you can take those two final numbers, subtract them from each other, and come up with a change in population size over time. And specifically, our time was per unit year. What I'm going to do is uh, a bit of simplification now. I'm going to continue looking at this equation. So it's delta n over delta t. And I'm actually going to see that I have a common factor here. And I know this is not uh, out of the uh, possibility of anybody to take out this common factor and simply say that n, if you multiply n by b minus m, so we're just taking out that common factor n. If you got lost in that, don't worry. I'm not a mathematician. I don't expect you to be. Just understand that we come up with a revised equation, let's say a simplified equation, of the population size multiplied by the death, the birth rate per capita minus the death rate per capita. And now what I'm further going to say is that this also is a little complex for me. I'm a population ecologist. I like things to be simple. And I'm going to take this B minus M, and I'm actually going to call it something different. I'm actually going to start calling B minus M something uh, uh, different, and we're going to write that down as call B minus M, which is what we just underlined. We're going to say that that is equal to lowercase r. I'm just going to say that for right now. And lowercase r is going to be what we would consider the per capita. Remember, this is how important per capita is, per individual. This is what we really care about as a population ecologist. We're going to call this the per capita rate of increase. And the reason why I would assume that we use the letter R and population ecologists use the letter R because we're focusing on this letter R right here, this rate of increase, or technically also could be decreased depending on the values that we see. So now we can further and finally uh, come up with a final revi revised equation, which is delta N over delta T is equal to lowercase r 
multiplied by the population size. So look at our stepwise uh, growth and evolution that we had of this equation. We started off with a very simple births minus deaths, and we said, hey, as simple as it is, let's make it a little more complex. Let's actually understand the per capita um, influence on this equation, and we did that. And then we took out that common factor, and we saw that, hey, we have this B minus M situation here. Why don't we just call that something? Why don't we just call that the per capita rate of increase, and now we have the same exact thing. This equation is the same exact thing as the first one, just modified to really give us a stronger hold on what population ecologists are trying to study. And finally, the last thing that we can say about all of this re re um, revision that we have come up with is the following. And you need to understand these following rules. What I'm going to tell you are a couple of statements, and you should understand them based off of basic mathematics. If I told you that r is greater than zero, if I told you that r is greater than zero, you should understand that the population size must, must, must do what? So if r is equal to point, is equal to one, is equal to two, is equal to three, is equal to four, the population size is probably going to be, of course, increasing. Remember, n stands for population size. If we have the population size of a thousand and r, that per capita rate of increase is, let's say, two, our population size is, of course, increasing. What if I told you um, r is less than zero? If r is less than zero, our population size is, of course, then decreasing. These are facts that you really, really need to just memorize and understand, of course, as well. Because the equation's right above, and it really, really makes sense when you actually put in some numbers, some fake numbers. Um, you can do that for this less than zero as well. And finally, I think this is another very important one, very important one, lots of exam questions and test questions that ask you if you figure this out, uh, what does this really mean? Well, let's say r is equal to zero. Let's say I have no rate of increase. What if I have just zero as the value? Well, then we're going to we're not going to state that the population size is increasing or decreasing. We're going to state that there is literally going to be no change in this population. There's no change, and there's a term for that. We call this no change, and it's very easy to remember. It's called zero population growth, ZPG for short. Zero population growth simply means that, yes, there are still, don't forget, there are still going to be births and deaths. It's not that the births and deaths stopped. That's not true. That doesn't happen. That's unrealistic. But what's happening is the births and the deaths are canceling each other out. So I'm just going to write that down. B plus D cancel each other out. There's a very constant birth rate, a very constant death rate that equal and cancel each other out. So that's what zero population growth is about. Just remember these ideas are greater than zero, less than zero, equal to zero, increasing, decreasing, or zero population growth. Finally, in addition, we're also going to be looking at this idea of instantaneous uh, population growth. And we can also, let's say, express population growth, what we would call instantaneously. And this is where we get a little fancier with our ma mathematic knowledge and mathematic capabilities. What well, I mean by this is that we can actually use some calculus specifically. This is going to be some differential calculus. You're of course not going to be responsible for knowing why and how you derive this, but you're going to simply state that d of n and the derivative of n over the derivative of lowercase t, just like what we did here, just a little bit modified for some calculus, is going to be equal to r, and this is called instantaneous, r sub inst, so write r, and then below it in little letters write inst, multiplied by n. What do you need to know about this? Simply, I think all you should understand is that this is what we would call a discrete equation, and this is an instantaneous equation. All I would understand about this is the fact that this is what is truly used in a population size um, change um, scenario that a population ecologist is looking at because it can look at a population size and its particular rate of growth or not growth um, at any instant in time. That's really what it all means. Um, don't get too caught up on this. It's just a part of your notes that you just need to remember that there's an instantaneous, uh, better, let's say, calculus-derived equation that is used by population ecologists. And finally, the absolute last thing that we'll cover in this video is what we would call the intrinsic rate of increase. I think this is a really important concept to understand. It's called the intrinsic rate of increase. So 
This is a little bit more mathematics but we don't have to really get caught up on the calculus of it. Let's just understand that the intrinsic rate of increase is equal to R max, R sub M A X in little, le in little letters. This simply defines as the following. This is the maximum, so let's say max rate of increase under ideal conditions. I really uh, think this is a powerful way of looking at population size changes. Max rate of increase under ideal conditions. So what we're going to do now is take this idea of per capita rate of increase. And we're going to say what would happen if we have, let's say, uh, an abundant amount of resources, tons and tons of resources. What would happen? What if we had tons and tons of resources? What if we also had um, a very low population density. What if we had tons and tons of space, tons and tons of resources? What is going to happen to the population? What we're going to see is that that population will reach its intrinsic rate of increase, the rate that it is truly capable of. That's what intrinsic means. It's deep within it. Um, intrinsically, this population will eventually reach this very high R max. And now, most of the time, what we're going to notice is that microorganisms like bacteria, are very good at actually getting to this R max. Microorganisms, we can say, have the highest R max. They have the highest possible rate of increase under ideal conditions. Those are like bacteria, and this is simply due to the fact that they actually reproduce very, very fast. And we're going to get into that as we look later into R-selected and K-selected species. But for right now, just know that microorganisms have the highest R-max. What about larger organisms? Well, they just have a lower R-max because they take longer to reproduce, and thus their maximum rate, rate is all about speed, their maximum rate is obviously going to be lower. So larger organisms is equal to a lower r R max, a lower R max, higher R max, highest R max in our microorganisms. And again, this is an ideal, perfect world scenario of abundant resources and low population density. How much can this population really, really grow? And the way you can understand that is by looking at the R max value. So all you would say is that once its R max has been reached, you can just insert R max into this equation and you will get a change in population size uh, final result based off of R max. So again, final point here, do not get caught up in the equations and the derivations. Understand, I think these are the biggest points to understand. Understand how we got to this and why we got to this. Don't worry too much about this instantaneous growth. Just know that this is a calculus-driven, differential calculus way of understanding it. It's instantaneous. You can look at um, the graph in your textbook that really does a good, good job of figuring out what it means to be instantaneous versus this is called discrete. And finally, the idea of R max.